Hey there, I'm Source Make, and welcome to the video on the interview question, Zombies in a Matrix. So this question also happens to be on Elite Code, and Elite Code has a solution for this, but to be honest, I find their code and their algorithm a little bit hard to understand, and so that's why I did it my way, and that's what we are going to go over in this video. So in this video, we will look at the problem statement, we will look at the theory behind my solution, we will go through the list of steps for the algorithm that I wrote out, that's right here, it's super clean, and to make sure that we understand this algorithm, we will apply it to this example right here in Microsoft Paint, which is going to go through a few quick examples to make sure we know what's going on. And then I've got some C++ code written out here that we will review. If C++ isn't your language, don't worry about it. It'll be easy to translate this code into your own language. And then we will run this code in lead code to make sure that it compiles properly and it runs pretty quickly. And finally, we will end the video by looking at the analysis of the time and space complexity of our solution and go over a few final notes. So this web page and the code, everything you need is right here on my website. To get to this web page, you can click the link below this video. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button for this YouTube channel. Thanks. So zombies in a matrix, this is a fun problem. So the problem says a matrix, which is just a 2D array, has cells that are filled with one of three possible values. So the cell could be empty, which is a value of zero. The cell could have a human in it, which is a value of one. Or the cell could have a zombie in it, which is a value of two. So every turn, the zombies will infect any humans that are adjacent to them, which is up, down, left, or right, and then those humans become zombies. And so the turns keep happening until every human becomes a zombie, or if there are any humans left, then the turns just stop, and that is it. So if we look at this example that is drawn out right here, this is our initial matrix, and we've got two zombies in the matrix. These two zombies are going to infect the humans next to them, and so the next turn, the matrix looks like this. Those humans became zombies, and so these new zombies are next to humans, and those guys will get infected, and so the next turn, the board will look like this, and then we have this human here that's left, and there are no zombies next to him, so he will not get infected, and so that's when we stop. And so the problem is, given this matrix, we are to return the number of turns that it takes until there are no humans left. And if any human does survive, then we are to return minus one. So that's the problem. Now this is actually pretty fun to think about, but when you think about the code, it's kind of really hard because it's so abstract and there's so many kind of ways to do this. So here's a theory behind our solution. We want to update the matrix each turn by infecting any humans that are next to those zombies. And so we keep we want to continue doing that. And there are a couple of things that we want to keep in mind for like an optimal solution. We want to make sure that we infect humans on the correct turns. We don't want to just like randomly infect this human, then let him infect this human, then let him infect this. Like we want to be respective of the turns and make sure that we are doing things in the correct order so that we can return the correct answer. And the other thing is we don't want to traverse empty cells unnecessarily. So if you look at this matrix, there are some empty cells and we don't want to go like turn by turn and just have to traverse the entire matrix because that might mean we have to look at empty cells, which is kind of bad, it's, it, it's wasteful. And so what we want to do for our solution is we will use a queue to hold each zombie. And each zombie in the queue, when we process it, will be able to infect those adjacent humans and turn them into zombies. And then those new zombies get added to the bottom of the queue and we just keep processing the queue until there are no zombies left. So that is basically the technique we're going to use. The thing where my code is going to be different than the lead code solution is I want to store for each zombie three things. I want to store their position in the matrix, which is I and J, and I want to store the turn that they got infected. Those are the three key pieces of information that I want to store. And to do that, we are going to have to use some special data structure, like just a structure a class to make an object for a zombie to store that extra information. That's a little bit more advanced than you would usually see in a algorithm competition or an interview, but it's actually the easiest way to solve this problem, at least for me. And so here is what the algorithm is going to look like. So we are going to create this structure class named zombie that is going to store the integers i and j, which is the position of that zombie, and the turn that that zombie got infected. We are going to create the queue that holds those zombies. We are going to traverse the matrix initially to see if we see any of those initial zombies, and we will add them to the queue. The turn infected for those guys is going to be zero because they started out infected. And then after we traverse the matrix, we are going to process every single zombie in the queue, just pop them off the queue. And what we want to do is we want to update the current turn to be this zombie's turn infected that we are processing. Because obviously, since we're using a queue data structure, the last zombie we process is going to be the last turn that we do something. 
And then the other thing is we want to infect any humans that are next to the zombie when we process them. So any humans that are next to the zombie, we turn them into zombies. And then we add those zombies to the queue. And so once we process everyone in the queue, all the zombification is going to be done. And we just want to traverse the matrix one last time to see if any humans survived. And then if any humans did survive, we return that minus one. Otherwise, we return the current turn that we got from this step right here. So that's the algorithm. It should be super simple. Let's go through a really quick example to make sure that we know what's going on. So we've got this initial grid right here, and we've got this queue, and I've got the steps that are going to be listed out right here so you can see. Yeah, let's make it a little bigger so you can kind of see what's going on. Okay, so first thing we do is we create the queue. The queue is right here. Then we want to traverse the initial matrix to see if we find those initial zombies. And so we see a zombie right here. What do we do? We store its I, J, and the turn it got infected. So this zombie is going to be 0, 0. That's this position. And its turn infected is 1. So that's it for him. We keep looking. We see this zombie right here. His position is 1, 3. And the turn he got infected is 0. And so that's it for that. So we move on to the next step is processing each zombie in the queue. And so what we do is we will look at the first zombie in the queue. And we'll pop him off the queue, but we'll work with him a little bit before moving on. And we will say, um, we'll update the current turn. So the current turn right here is going to be 0. And then we will look for any humans next to the zombie. So what we do for the humans is, let's look to the right. And we do see a human. We look to the zombie's right. And we convert him to a zombie in the grid. We update the grid and turn him into a zombie, which means we change his value to 2 for this problem. And then we add him to the queue. So this position is 0, 1. And the turn he got infected will be this zombie's turn he got infected, plus 1, which is going to be 1. And so then we finish this human. We look for any other humans. Oh, we see this guy. So this guy we will turn into a zombie, update him in the grid. Then we will add his position and his turn infected, which will be one to the queue. And he's added to the queue. So now we're done looking for humans for the zombie. We pop him off the queue and we move on to the next zombie, which is going to be this guy. And then this is kind of the process. We just keep processing zombies, adding them if we see them. And that's kind of what we do. So that's pretty simple. Now let's look at the C++ code. So C++ code is really simple. We have a struct right here that will hold the ij and the turn infected like we talked about. Our function starts right here and it passes in the grid like we talked about. We initialize the turn that we're going to be returning, and we create that queue. We look through the initial grid to make sure if we see any zombie, we add them to the queue. And if we do see a zombie, which means that their value is 2 in the grid, we add that zombie to queue, which is this function right here. This function is really simple. We mark the zombie in the grid, which for the initial zombies doesn't matter. But when we are infecting humans and converting them into zombies, this line is what's going to do the magic of updating them and converting them into zombies. Then we create a zombie object, and we push that onto the queue. Really simple function, really clean. Next, we process the queue, just a simple while loop. We look at the top of the queue and we pop it off, or the front of the queue rather. We update the turn like we were saying, and then we do this thing called infect neighbors. And we pass in the turn infected plus one. And so all this is going to do is it's a function. It looks up, down, left, and right for this zombie's position. And if the position is valid inside of the matrix, and if that position holds a human, then we add a zombie to the queue by infecting this human and making them into a zombie and adding them to the queue. Really simple code. Again, really clean. I like it. And then finally, we have this code right here that will traverse the matrix one last time to check if any humans survived. And then if they survived, we return minus one. Otherwise, we return the turn that we got. This code is really simple. Um, let's copy and paste this into lead code to make sure that it works. So we'll copy and paste this. I just hit run code, make sure it compiles properly. Fingers crossed, it really should. And then I'm going to submit this code. And you can see I kind of practice this a little bit. And 94% is great time, 100% of the space, 4 milliseconds is basically as good as we're going to get. And we wrote like this really clean code that's really kind of professional looking too, which is nice. So that's always great. So that's usually when you do algorithms, you write this like really ugly looking code that runs quickly. But this one looks good and it runs well too, which is great. So with that said, the analysis, the time complexity is order n, where n is the number of cells in the matrix, because um, we process each cell at most once, basically for each zombie. The space complexity is going to be order n, because at worst, the queue is going to be holding every single zombie, which means that possibly the entire initial matrix is full of zombies. And so we have to push them all into the queue.
So that's order n. And the last thing is the note is we call this solution multiple BFS because a BFS is really you look at a node and then you look at all its neighbors in some kind of order. But we're not starting out with just one node. We're starting out with potentially multiple nodes, multiple zombies in these cases. And so it's kind of like BFS, but it's a little more advanced. So this is a zombie problem. If you like this video and if you understood it well, please like this video. Please leave a comment if you want to see something else. Please subscribe, follow me on Twitter. And that's it for this. Good luck on the next question.